we saw in the last video that though all swaras of a raga are critical their strengths in the raga are not the same that is some are stronger they have a greater presence whereas the others have a more diminished presence um and so it's very important that for the raga to uh, to bloom or to manifest itself that we use the swaras in the right proportion and uh, this uh, is as you see that everything is ultimately what is the right proportion there's no way to quantify it it's ultimately uh, an oral and oral tradition that is something that is received by listening to the raga by a teacher teaching the raga and the student absorbing it um, so there is no way of quantifying any of this but uh these are some of the ways we talk about ragas right that the ragas have swaras and among them some are strong and some of them should not be emphasized and so on we also saw in the last video that there are considerations of uh swaras on which from which phrases may start raga phrases may start or may end now in this video uh so we are basically going beyond the scale right we raga is at a basic level we talk about a raga in terms of its scale the what else can we say about the raga so that was those uh, the strengths of swaras that is one of the aspects now in this video we will look at another um very important aspect of ragas and that is ornament ornament or the general uh, cat category the word for it is gamaka now gamaka is an ancient category found in very ancient texts in the context of music but um in today's contemporary uh usage of the word in hindustani music it has come to acquire a very specific uh meaning uh, and gamaka denotes a very specific ornament which is a heavy kind of oscillation so when you say gamaka tan or you know gamak yukta uh, presentation it means a particular kind of ornament um and it's as i said it's a heavy oscillation but gamaka has a more uh, general sense of any ornament now what is an ornament ornament we we think of it as a beautifying uh, uh device right something to beautify uh, uh an object that is otherwise maybe you know plain and always with a view to adding something the the object that is beautified the object that is ornamented is thereby beautified now which is all fine um uh, as applied to this music except that the gamaka the ornament is not regarded as an extraneous something that uh, you have the plain note and then you apply to it it's more integral to the music itself now gamak as an ancient category i said has been described as the shadow of a previous note that passes over the succeeding note it's it's like the point of meeting of the shade and the bright sun so there is a blurring it's not sharp and abrupt so um the idea is that one does not the, the idea of the metaphor is that uh, one does not move from one swara to another abruptly in a staccato fashion but you know you move into the next pitch or the next swara or the next phrase through various movements of continuity that maintains the melodic continuity so you may glide into it or you may just drop into it or you may even land with a thud or you may oscillate 
towards it. So these are the various, uh, some of the ways in which uh, Gamaka can manifest itself. Um, some musicians, um, as I said, have, uh, since Gamaka has a more specific usage in uh, Hindustani music to denote a particular heavy oscillation, some musicians prefer to use the word alankara, which in fact literally means ornament. Um, but uh, alankara is also a word that is used for melodic patterns, you know, especially those that we give for exercises. Um, and so there is some overlapping of terminology here. So in what follows in this video and later on throughout the course, I use the word gamaka in the more general sense of ornament, uh, any ornament at all. So what is a gamaka? Gamaka is a way of bringing notes together as a movement from one note to another. You know, the, the two or more notes come together as an integral whole because of this ornament. And we do not, as I said, think of gamaka as an external appendage as uh, suggested by the word ornament. But it is integral to the way swaras are used in ragas. Now, in, a, in Hindustani music, we use a variety of gamakas and we use them extensively. As I said, this music is heavily, um, um, extensively ornamented. But uh, the ornaments are very specific. They have to be used with great understanding and control. It is integral to the raga. Ragas depend on the on correct ornaments for their uh, expression, for the ragas to be expressed. It, it, the ornament is, is very critical. And it is not a matter of beautifying according to one's whim. You know, however refined uh, sensibility a musician may have, it is not up to her whim to say that let me apply this ornament here. There are, there are ragas identity depends very much on correct and artistic execution of specific gamakas at the right places. That said, there is divergence in terms of stylistic preferences. So some musicians, some schools of music would prefer one kind of uh, gamaka and some others may prefer another kind of gamaka. But there are, that is in, in terms of the overall texture of the music. But when it comes to individual ragas, there are some specific expectations which are respected. Now, one of the most important gamakas is the meend. Meend, which uh, I believe might translate into the glissando, the guide, the glide. So, the very texture of uh, Hindustani music rests on meend. To demonstrate, let us take the simple rag bhup, bhupali, the major pent pentatonic scale. Now, if I were to sing without the mead, in a staccato fashion, it would be like this. Sa da sa re ga ga re pa ga re ga Re sa da da sa. But this is not how we perform this. It goes like this. Sa, it could go like this. Sa da. So, sa da. Instead of that, sa da. Sa re ga. So 
everywhere we have the mean gare pa let the glide from re pa ga gare gare da na sa so as i said the mean is responsible for the melodic continuity that is so um, so typical and so important to the the sound of hindustani music and it's the opposite of uh, staccato now this um, apart from its you know very pervasive presence in uh, hindustani music whether it's khayal or dhrupad or instrumental music some ragas <coughs> have a very specific uh, uh, requirement of the mean in some places because unless you have that it is not that raga now even down when i sang even when just now when i uh, demonstrated bho pare gare no pare re gare pa ga no this re pa pare pa ga these these combinations are there in many ragas and it is subtly different the way that mean is negotiated the way the mean is executed so now i'll just take this um example of pare right and you have a rag called chaya nat chaya nat is a rag um in which this uh, mean is, is very important in a particular place sa re ga ga ma ma pa re now this pa re this particular way of moving from pa to re it's a mean but it's a there are different ways you can do the mean you know um because it basically depends on between pa and re there are so many swaras there are so many pitches which of them do you touch in the slightest just a flicker pa re here you can't really make out any particular swara that is getting lit up but obviously you're traversing the distance between pa and re 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 ga ma pa re re ga ma re sa re sa da pa now the same pa re in a raga like uh, for instance Mm. pa re sa this is the way for instance you use the uh, pa re the, the way the pa re is executed in a rag like uh, god sarang you know? sa ga re ma ga pa re sa pa re pa re let us try on it now pa re this is a different rag because it, the, you are touching the ma and the ga just the slightest of flickers pa re pa re ni da ni re ga ma pa re or if you have pa re no this is different it's uh, the sarang uh, family re ma pa re pa re ma ni ni sa so it's a it's a mean between pa and re but there are different ways that uh, it has to be executed depending on the raga or again pa Pare, 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 
Now, Pare is a downward uh, mean. You can also have upward mean. As in rag like Kamud. Re pa ga ma da pa ga ma re sa re pa Let our upward glide to re to pa um, I'll just play a, a short clip here of uh, Ustad Bade Gulam Ali Khan Sahib was one of uh, the leading lights of uh, Khayal uh, vocalism in the last century. Uh, he has sung uh, Ra Kamod and the link to the YouTube uh, video is given below uh, which you can listen to when you have uh, more time but here I am playing a very short clip to show you how this uh, this rapa glide and the gamadhapa uh, glide happen. Another um, important ornament is Kampana, or which is just uh, similar to the South Indian Kampita. Uh, it is also called Andolita, Andolita Swara, Andolan, Andolan is oscillation. And uh, this, um, according to uh, a definition given by uh, Dr. Ashok Ranade, I, I quote him. It is an important class of melodic embellishment in which a note is produced in such a manner that the entire range between the preceding and the succeeding notes is suggested. Now, uh, typical examples of this kampita, kampana is in, a ra is in ragas like um, Malhar, Mia Malhar or uh, Darbari Kanada, where the Gandhar, the Ga is oscillated. Um, so here you have re pa ga so ga that's the ga ga that's the you know basic uh, position of the komal gandhar which is what is used in this raga uh, but when you sing it in Malhar, that pitch is almost not heard. The Gandhar itself exists between the Ma and the Re. In a certain way, you oscillate that, that's, oscillate between those two pitches. This is the Gandhar. Re Pa Ga. you have um, the, the Andolan, the uh, Kampana of uh, Rishab, the Re, the Komal Re in uh, say Raga like Bhairav. Um, so the, the actual Gama, the Bhairav is this is the rushab, the resa. The phrase is Gamadesa. But in Bhairav, that's a very typical way of singing the re. Gamadesa. And also dha, the devat. Sadapa 
So this is Kampana. Another um, um, ornament or gamaka is Jhatka. Meaned after that you have um, Kampana. Oscillation then you have Jhatka. Now what is chatka is uh, again it, it's a fast movement from one note to another with the emphasis on the second note. De, de. So this is a, a typical uh, this is a way you can go gare gare this is mean Gare, gare. Hmm? Now there are there are some ragas in which this chatka is uh, integral to uh, its phrases, like uh, the raga savni, like sa de de no ga ma pa ma pa de. So you move from the one note to another with a force while when you're actually highlighting the second the note that, uh, with which you end and the phrase. So that is Jhatka. Now you see in all this there may be some um, some amount of divergence in uh, the names of the gamakas, the uh, and I said, as I said, extent of usage um, across uh, by musicians or and especially by, uh, by schools of music, like what we call gharana. Um, even identifying the gamakas and naming them, uh, that there may be some. Uh, divergence because you see the world of uh, Hindustani music is not um, completely homogenized and standardized. There, there is of course order and discipline but you know it's mostly at the level of uh, individual teaching lineages or schools. Every guru uh, will impart the gamakas and the ragas as he has learnt them from his own guru and um, this is how the ragas and their textures, their identity, their uh, swarupa, their, their, their basic personality, that is how it, this is, uh, the ragas are perpetuated through the guru shishya, the teacher student lineage. But there may be some divergence uh, between schools. Um, and which you know which makes for a vibrant maybe uh, mildly chaotic uh, world um, as opposed to a streamlined and homogenized world of performance. So um, my source for um, the various categories of gamakas is uh, as I said Dr. Ashok Ranade's uh, work um, but even uh, he himself is for instance here giving a very guarded um, definition of another pretty important uh, gamaka called Zamzama. It's called Zamzama um, and he says it's reportedly a musical embellishment that uses pairs of notes in perceptibly fast tempo repeatedly and successively. Mm. 
你你的的哥哥妈妈的的你你的的傻傻你你的的爸爸妈妈哥哥的的傻傻 ，with gamak you have to do， 啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊啊
sober ragas which you know uh, demand a very uh, very systematic and very slow and uh, deliberate treatment um, and you have what is called chanchal that is which demand ragas that cannot tolerate that kind of a very uh, elaborate presentation but it's, it's in their nature that they be rendered at a in a much quicker way quick light footed you know fast paced um, for instance we uh, have a rag uh, called deshkar hmm, which is which actually has the same scale as bhupali or bhup which which we have seen earlier in the course so it has it has the same scale the same set of notes but uh, one of the uh, distinguishing features of cha of uh, deshkar is that it is a chanchal raga it is quick okay so bhup uh, is usually explored in a very very slow and deliberate uh, manner sada pada dha sa sare gare gada dha sare gada gare dha sa re sare dha dha sare so this car is uh, much quicker it has a chanchal prakriti that is it just moves it keeps moving quickly sada pada sa pada ga pa ga pada pa ga sa so this is the rough movement of uh, this car um this which is called which is a chanchal rag you can't give it a very slow treatment uh, without you know destroying it um typically we also see that these chanchal ragas are what we call uttarang pradhan that is they 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 remain confined confined to the upper reaches um, we don't explore them much in the lower uh, ranges so this as i said it um, the an, an, another uh, way of describing ragas another aspect of uh, the raga lakshana or the how you can talk about raga is whether they are uttarang or purvang pradhan ragas that is whether they are they have to be explored in the higher ranges mostly or mostly in the lower ranges or they are you know they have to be explored in all the, throughout the melodic range so that is another way of uh, Uh, another characteristic of ragas now a raga revolves around phrases though of course you know it's constituted of swaras and we have seen what various considerations about the uh, swaras in a raga um, but it is you know it's the phrases that really bring out a raga notes that are brought together in specific formations specific phrases basically with various considerations of you know madhi samvadi of ornament and uh, so on so for instance in yaman though yaman has a scale of it's is is like it's it's a sampurna rag right it's a it's a complete it has all the seven swaras so yaman has a scale of sa sa ri ga ma pad ni sa ni dha pa ma ga ri sa right but we never sing sa re ga re ni dha ni sa re sa we don't that's not yaman at all so this these phrases that is really the life of uh, every rag yaman the phrase always is nit ni re ga almost by default very rarely can we find sa re ga Uh, and almost not in contemporary music yaman is uh, yaman does not use the phrase sarega it's always ni re ni re ga ga re ni da ni re ga sa ni re ga re ni da ni sa ni 
This is another important phrase. Nida Nisa Nida Sa Mada Nisa Very rarely. Mada Sa Nida Gare Gama Pade Sa Again, Pade Sa This is another important phrase of Yaman. Paisa ma, paisa. This paisa phrase is again very raga vachaka. There is something that is important for Yaman. Madani sani parega, rega ma paresa. Pa paisa ni pa. Madani mani pama gamare ga Again, gamare ga That vakrata, that mare ga re Nire ga re gama nipare sa 